Hello, today I'll be walking through the sequencer setup for the Next Gen Destruction Toolkit. I've created these trigger destruction blueprints, which what they do is basically trigger destruction the same way you would firing the weapon from the first person character, but you're able to manually trigger it from within sequencer, right? So each one of these has its own index for which order it will be triggered in and also the start position and end position which will determine its rotation and or, like what it orients towards this arrow is just an indicator to show where the bullet's coming from so you can position it where you would like like so then you have a few other options like um, having a muzzle flash which will spawn here and enabling the bullet tracer between the two points, which I'm just going to leave on for now. Calculate rotation from bullet tracer, I leave that on, which will just basically, instead of using the actor's rotation, it uses the rotation from um, where it's facing the um, origin of the bullet. And then the trigger order is which order it will trigger in, which I'll get into in a second. I'll open the sequence. Um, this just has a simple camera move with a bunch of keyframes for the triggering of the destruction. As you'll notice, the keyframes are all on one track because they're called on this master controller, not on the um, individual triggers. So you don't need to add a, an event for each one of these in your sequence because that's a pain in the ass. I created this uh, master controller which will trigger to each one of the uh, uh, destruction blueprints based on its index, right? So if I open this up here, we can see it starts off by getting all of the trigger actors that are in the scene and it just iterates on those and triggers the one that matches the current hit index, right? So each keyframe it will increment that upwards so it's 0, 1, 2, 3 and that correlates to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So this one triggers first on the first keyframe, second keyframe, third, fourth and so on. It just makes it a lot easier to set up so that you don't have to um, select this specific um, event for each, each single one of these because then you'd have a track for each one of those different events. It's just easier to call it from the master. So what I've done here to call it from the master is just add a blueprint, blueprint track for the master controller, um, add a trigger event track, and that has all these keyframes. For these keyframes, if I were to create another one, usually I would just copy paste one that's already there, but to do it from scratch, what you would do is um, add a key and then here properties bind this endpoint now at the moment it's in this sequence because it's already being created but doing it for the first time you would go to the BP trigger destruction master controller search for trigger destruction and set that but because that's already been done in the sequence it's been created in the sequence blueprint you just call that from there right which is this and then bam, that's the same one. But once you've got one of them, it's easier to just copy paste, copy paste, obviously. And let me run you through how to output that. So we've got our camera move, we've got all these uh, impacts set up and to render it out, we wanna make sure we have the movie render queue enabled in the plugins, right? So if you don't have this enabled, enable it because uh, the legacy uh, movie scene capture thing, not good, not worth using, and it causes some bugs with chaos. So I'll just use the movie render queue, render local. I think it's got debug traces on yet. It doesn't matter. It's fine for the showcase. And this is what you get. So you can set up the impacts however you want in your scene and just set what, um, set a number for them if there's multiple and that will be the index in which they they activate based on the keyframes. Yeah. 
So that should just about cover it. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments and thanks for watching. Cheers.